All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Yu Ke Wang, also go by Andrew. So uh, today I'm going to talk about a project we recently uh, started. Uh, it's called Shedding Hub. It's an open science portal for existing pathogen shedding data and models. So for this work, as uh, Dr. Theo Hoffman from Harvard and I started in a few months ago. Uh, next, please. Uh, so the Shedding Hub work is actually an effort within the Center for Infectious Disease Modeling and Analytical Training Hub, also called CITMAS, uh, uh, Emory University. And then next, please. So first, I want to give some background about the center. So in 2023, uh, CDC Center for Forecasting and Outbreak Analytics, also called CFA, uh, established the Insight Night, which is a national outbreak analytics and disease modeling network. And then the Insight Night focused on training, analytical tool development, and advancing the analysis and the use of data for infectious disease spread. It brings more than 100 academic and private partners and health departments. Uh, for those partners, it was categorized into three categories, uh, innovation, integration, and implementation. So next, please. Uh, Across the United States, there are 13 centers founded uh, through the CFA program. And then you can see the map on the left. And the Emory Seed Math Center is a center of innovations. So our partner include the Georgia Department of Public Health, uh, Kaiser Permanente of Georgia, and then Georgia Emerging uh, Infection Program. Next, please. Okay, now uh, I will talk about the motivation of the Shedding Hub. Uh, next, please. So before the, the shedding hub work, I have been working for wastewater surveillance for maybe six or seven years. So first started with typhoid and then later on uh, with uh, COVID and other pathogens. Uh, we have conducted in domestic settings and the international settings. So real, really quick about wastewater surveillance. So the wastewater surveillance is a poach for monitoring specific pathogens circulating in a population by uh, examining sewage samples. Pathogens shed in feces, uh, urine, sputum, and vomit are aggregated in the sewage system. A well-designed wastewater surveillance can provide actionable information, including certification of elimination, uh, early warning, uh, now casting and forecasting for temporal trends and the identification of disease hotspots. The figures on the left uh, is uh, published by the CDC news program, the National Wastewater uh, Surveillance System, that illustrate how the wastewater monitoring actually works. Next, please. So uh, in 2022, Wait and All published a very good paper, did a uh, great summarization of the, all the factors that can contribute to the uncertainty for the wastewater surveillance, including the population, network, sampling, and analysis. So in my previous research, I was mainly focusing on the how to strategically design wastewater surveillance by selecting sampling site over networks. Uh, that's the, the yellow part. And during that process, I realized how important the shedding dynamic information uh, you know, how important it is to the wastewater-based epidemiology. Next, please. So why is important? Uh, so the goal of wastewater-based uh, epidemiology is to uh, interpret the wastewater results uh, usually in like a genome copies per uh, m uh, milliliter of wastewater uh, to estimate the, the clinical cases in the population. So you can see the figures on the left actually showing this is uh, for COVID. When you get the uh, gene copies per day as uh, uh, in this uh, subfigure A, and then for the from the wastewater, it can be used to estimate how many cases of the the disease incidence in the population. And then such interpretations really depends on how uh, whether you get a quantitative, well characterized shedding information for the pathogens and the biomarkers, as the the shedding dynamics can make the uh, you know distribution of the SARS-CoV-2 virus in the wastewater really detour. And then such information include uh, like when the shedding will start, 
and when it will peak and when it will end. And then along the whole course of the infection was the amount of pathogen they shared each day. Next, please. And then for the current knowledge of the shedding information, so most shedding data uh, have been collected in clinical studies or human challenge studies. So limited raw uh, shedding data are openly available and they are not standardized. There's no public accessible tutorials or feasible tools for modeling shedding uh, dynamics. And then there's no community portal for learning and contributing the shedding knowledge, like what Jeremy is facing. So we can only make some naive uh, assumptions based on that. Next, please. Uh, for the shedding hub, next, please. Sorry, I should not make those titles. <laughs> uh, so when we establish the shedding hub, uh, we want to establish this as an open science project that follows uh, the four, uh, five principles, accessible, verifiable, reliable, reproducible, and sustainable. And th there's a, a very nice illustration I got from one of the publications showing how the open science project works. Uh, and then I will highlight those principles in the following slides where I shared the screenshot of our project. Next, please. And this is, uh, right now I'm starting to share some screenshots of our current work. Uh, mainly those are screenshots from the GitHub, which is uh, open in this link. It's a working in progress. We just started a few months ago. So uh, you will see more and more accountants coming into it. But this is the uh, Shedding Hub organization page. Uh, Teal made, Teal made this very nice logo <laughs> this, of the Shedding Hub. And then we give it the descriptions. Uh, currently, there are six team members with Teal, me, and then four students, and Emery. And then we're trying to recruit more uh, people on board and also welcome the you know, researchers to join if they're interested. In. Next, please. So this is the data governance framework. So I'm not going to go to the detail, but this is a showing uh, the responsibility of each team members and then the rules and the technology that we are using during the each process step of our data. Next, please. And then the data we have in, uh, in the, uh, on the GitHub uh, include the raw data file, the markdown files to process the data, and the standardized data in YAMA format, and then a schema file. All the data are, are public accessible in GitHub. And then this is an example of what the YAMA format uh, data looks like. And we extract those from the paper. Uh, next, please. And then for data processing, we are using markdown files to make sure all the information we have is uh, 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 verifiable with the information source. If you can see those, uh, I have the links that everything you are wondering what's going on, you can click on the link to find the original information from either the uh, you know, website or papers. And then I will also want to make sure everything is reproducible with open code. So we'll have this code. Those codes are runnable. Then uh, you can download the markdown file, use maybe Jupyter Notebook and then rerun everything we created. Next, please. And then for the data standardization, we're using JSON schema, which is a uh, standard to specify the structure of the data, validate it, and include all the documentations of each field. So this you can consider as a code book, but this also can be function to validate the, uh, any data you upload to the shedding hub. Uh, and then this is an example of the, what's the current schema we're using. Next, please. And then for the data validation, uh, in addition to the schema I just mentioned, uh, all the data will be checked and reviewed by two reviewers. And then we also create some functions to automatically generate the data summarization. As you can see, there's an example down here. And then uh, during the whole process, we will have a discussions on the GitHub and everything will be documented on the GitHub. Then anybody want to see what the decision making progress is, and then they can just check on those issues we use and then those uh, pull requests uh, we, we conducted. Next, please. 
And then meanwhile, we're also working on to generate some tutorials for modeling shedding data in Python and R. Uh, this is an example we recently created. Uh, it's a Bayesian workflow for modeling shedding dynamics using R standards. It's quite uh, simple models. I think Teal, uh, in Teal's presentation, he's going to give a more advanced when you get more data, you can have a more complex model. But this one is just trying to teach people how you can uh, conduct those shedding dynamics modelings. And then everything, again, is... Uh, uh, we, um, till recently, I think it, maybe two days ago, just uh, enable a function. Now all the data on this shedding hub, like GitHub, can be called using a Python library. So you just like once you have this Python library, just one line of code, you can have a version control the data directly loaded in your Python environment. And then for the contribution, we develop some instructions how uh, you know the research community can contribute their own data or models to the shedding hub so our goal is trying to make this uh, efforts to be sustainable with partnerships and the contribution from the research community in the future next please and then this is our very naive working in progress website and then they did some very simple uh, uh, summary statistics and then for each paper as you can see there's an example you'll be able to see the original paper where you saw and uh, uh, what's the uh, standardized data set and then that's the middle button and then we also provide uh, some exploratory uh, uh, summary statistics for each paper once you click on that that's the screenshot on the on the right side next please so for the work plan, um, we currently making <laughs> some uh, uh, three phases of uh, work plan. Uh, the first phase, which is uh, the current phase, is we're trying to build a strong shading hub team and then trying to develop the basic structures and the workflow of the shading hub. And then we're going to mainly focus on the open access data and then those data published in literature, either in the figures or the supplemental materials. And then we're going to prioritize those quantifiable longitudinal measurements, which is more useful for the shedding dynamic modeling. And then for the models, we will develop simple and classical models within the Shedding Hub team and then make it as markdown files. And then bell markers, we're going to prioritize those uh, pathogens of interest for wastewater surveillance. And then when we move to the phase two, we'll try to expand this to additional pathogens or bell markers. And then we're also uh, going to invite contribution of data because I have been talk start to talk with uh, some collaborators because they have some like uh, old neurovirus human challenge study uh, data set. And we're trying to uh, slowly incorporate everything. Yeah, and then for phase three, we're going to develop the analytical tools like dashboard packages and then promote the usage and the contribution from the community. And then we're going to include more and more like the semi-quantifiable and non-quantifiable data. Next, please. And then this is the last slide uh, where for the use case, I think the Shedding Hub can be used to support the wastewater-based epidemiology applications estimating disease instance for various infectious disease and can be used to better understand the sensitivity of different disease diagnostic methods. I forgot to mention this shedding is not just a fecal shedding. We are considering all different types of uh, samples. And then this can be used to support the decision making for disease, uh, disease control and the prevention policies. And last, uh, it can be used to support wastewater monitoring for drug use. Next, please. And uh, I would like to thank for the uh, hard work for the Shedding Hub team and then also the, the great support from the CDMAS team and Emery. Thank you all. I think we have time for one or two quick questions if anybody has one. Great presentation, by the way. Oh, 
So if I'm understanding correctly, you're mostly focused on individual level shedding data for, for the hub. And how do you think about translating that in terms of relevance for wastewater surveillance into the myriad of ways that we measure pathogen concentrations uh, in wastewater um, and how, you know, in, in the, you know, the, the heavy complexities of the sampling there as well. Right. So uh, one of the things, uh, first uh, to answer this question, we are, yes, we're interested in this individual levels. Uh, more of those, you know, come from, you know, clinical trials or human challenge studies. But during the whole, uh, during the time uh, of the aggregating those data, we also c consider to uh, extract those demographic information, for example, whether they are vaccinated or not, what their race, what their age. So eventually trying to aggregate those information to some amount, then we can think about whether the subgroup analysis of those can be can be done. But at this point, we only had a few studies. It's very hard to know what's, you know, what we're going to see. But the other thing where I think is important is we are not just consider fecal shedding. So there's other some Samples at the same time, maybe uh, they're collecting respiratory samples, fecal samples, maybe spilt and samples, and maybe even serology information. And then we'll be able to conduct some correlations of those uh, temporal uh, analysis of those samples. I think that could be another potential. But right now, it's uh, still very early. I, I cannot really give you a, a concrete answer for that. Maybe I'm just 